Hello, welcome to Reality. My name is Ali and this is Vladimir and this is my birth story. This is the third time I've been recording this. The first time I deleted it on accident. The second time my computer is refusing to download something this large. So gotta give you guys a Sparks Note edition. Also real quick, we do daily vlogs here. So if you guys wanna check those out, totally feel free to. So my little guy was a week and a day late. I went to the hospital on November 2nd to be induced. Was put on Pitocin, though I wanted him to be natural, just everything natural for him to come naturally for me to neighbor, labor at home for as long as possible. But getting a week and a day out of my doctor was already hard enough, so I was like, whatever. I shouldn't push it. The first nurse we had was amazing. She was great. She gave me a few good tips of advice, which had ended up actually helping a lot later on the following day. So for right away, I was put on Pitocin after we got this one on the monitor and he woke up just so they can see some activity. So that was about five o'clock in the morning. I did progress by myself. I think the highest I did prior to getting the epidural was I think a five maybe a four so i went into the hospital being not even a centimeter dilated and the first nurse was actually able to manually dilate me and strip my membranes so i went from being not even a one to being a three centimeters and having my membrane stripped so i lost my mucus plug all that fun stuff yada 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 hours later i was still not progressing so my second nurse of the day who i did not really care for very much had um told the doctor who was on call that i wanted to get my water broken even though i had told her that i did not so the doctor came in and he had told me that he didn't feel comfortable doing it because i'm not one of his patients and second of all he doesn't like breaking people's waters if they haven't had an epidural because it's going to get very painful very fast and I had told my nurse prior to her going to get him that I didn't want to do it. So I told him I still didn't want to do it because my line of thinking was that I can always later on get my water broken, but I can't re-inflate it pretty much because after your water is broken, they don't let you go past 24 hours due to um, the fear of infection setting in. So I knew that the moment that they did break my water, that the countdown was truly, honestly gonna be on. So he had ended up leaving, which pissed off the nurse a little bit. And she had said about an hour and a half later, almost two hours later after I had given myself time to progress and still nothing was happening. I had told her that it was okay. I would like to get my water broken now. She said that I would have to wait for my doctor because their doctor said he wouldn't come back into the room and that next time that a nurse suggests something that I should just do it. I'm like, okay then, because that's the world we live in. So whatever, I had to wait for my doctor and my doctor never ended up making it, which was fine by me because then that gave me and Vlad more time to try to labor just as naturally as possible. So a few hours later, um, the nurse, that, that mean nurse still, had ended up checking me again and she was actually able to break my water with her finger and giant gush of water and that is when the contractions really started hitting home uh, prior to this i had been on pitocin like i said since five in the morning and then prior to my water breaking i had been on the highest level of pitocin that the hospital uh, administrates for about maybe two hours so when these contractions started happening they were very strong contractions I had emotionally and physically prepared myself for contractions to feel like menstrual cramps because that is what everyone I've ever known that had given birth has likened them to. But my contractions were not like that in the slightest. They felt like my uterus was being filled up quickly and then being, um, being emptied out quickly. So it was like going to extremely large, like it was going to pop to going like super skinny again. So after my water was broken, I was no longer allowed to uh, bounce on the birthing ball. And I just had to lay there. And I remember laying there for about an hour having these terrible contractions, which I was trying to ride through, but I really felt like if I could only just sit on the ball, I'd feel much better. But the nurse said I couldn't. So an hour of just laying in the bed, I the nurses had actually switched 
that mean nurse had gone home and I got the best nurse ever. She was actually the nurse who helped deliver him. And she said I could be on the birthing ball and I could walk around still if I wanted to, which I was so happy and it helped so, so, so much. But the only issue with that is, is that now my contractions were actually painful, which prior to this moment in time, they weren't. Uh, they were still not doing anything in the sense of for my cervix. So at this point in time, I'd been freaking out because I'd been there for what felt like to be ever. I had been on Pitocin since five in the morning. And I think at this point in time, I think it might be eight or nine at night. So I was freaking out because the nurse had said that we needed to start thinking about the next step, which would be inserting a a monitor to um, get a better gauge and reading of the contractions I was having to see what our next step would be, whether we should slow down the Pitocin or give me more or continue at the rate we were going because the monitor that was outside on my belly wasn't giving good readings. And that hurt. That hurt an awful lot. It was kind of, she had to stick it inside of me because it had to stick onto the vaginal wall to get a better reading. And it was just so painful. At this point in time, also, I had been fighting the urge to puke and I couldn't hold it anymore. I had ended up telling her I needed to go to the bathroom and she said that that was fine because she had to take it out and retry it again. So at this point in time, I was just so convinced that he was going to have to come via C-section because I was still at maybe a four, may, maybe close to a five, but I had been that way since the afternoon, since I think noon. So, you know, it's nine, 10 o'clock. I'm like, oh my God, nothing's happening. And I was just freaking out. And then to top it all off, I was physically sick and I was puking and after my water was broken they didn't like me being off the monitor for very long because i was having such strong contractions they wanted to make sure that he was taking them well so every time i'd get up to go to the bathroom and sit on the toilet seat which was one of the only things that brought me relief was just i don't know sitting there and just being in that just that smaller room without all the medical items around me uh they would come in and tell me i'd have to you know get back on the bed as soon as possible so i remember looking at raymond my husband and telling him that i wanted to go home and it's you might think it's silly and he thought it was silly too because he kept on telling me that we couldn't go home until we had this baby and obviously i knew that but i really just wanted to go home at that point in time i don't think i've ever felt so defeated just as a person <laughs> before in my entire life I had pictured my son's birth from the moment, from even before when he was born, I had pictured my child's birth for years and years and for it to not go the way I wanted it to was devastating. First and foremost with him not coming on his own. Second of all, having to be induced and now with the threat of having to get possibly a C-section looming above me, I was just done for. I just felt so defeated so the only thing i could even begin to say to even express how i felt was that i just wanted to go home because in my mind i could go home and i wouldn't be forced or rushed to do anything else i didn't want to do and i knew that that's not the way it was going to work but that's the only thing that i could get out of my mouth so at this point in time while i was walking back from the bathroom to the bed and excruciating pain because these contractions are coming maybe one every two to three minutes now. I um, remember what my first nurse, the nurse that we I first had in the morning said to me. She said that if you know, if things, if you for some whatever reason stop progressing, it might be because you're fighting against it. And if you are still gun ho on having a vaginal birth, and you know, they're kind of talking about maybe doing a C-section that you should try to get an epidural to see if maybe that's the last thing you need because sometimes the epidural can just help you relax and get things moving along. And like I said, I had been at a standstill. The most I had opened was to a five and it had been a five for hours now. And the contractions were getting stronger, but nothing was going on down there. Nothing was changing. So I decided to tell my husband, I'm like, look, I want to get an epidural. And my husband, being an amazing partner that he is, had tried reminding me that I wanted to do it naturally, which he feels bad about now. He's like, if I just only let you have it sooner and blah, 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 blah. But he had talked to me calmly and 
was just trying to make sure that that is really what I wanted to do. He's like, well, you wanted to do this naturally. Why don't you try to give it another hour? You know, he also even told me that he knew I could do it. But at this point in time, I had already puked all over myself several times. I was shaking. I was in pain. I wanted to go home and I couldn't. I just didn't. And I was just, like I said, I was just so defeated. I was like, no, I wanted to get an epidural. And he's like, well, just give it an hour, another hour. And if you still feel that way, you know, we, you can do it. But just try to relax. Sorry, someone woke up. So I was trying to relax and breathe through it. And the hour had passed. And I still felt the way I felt. Because I was convinced he was going to have to be born via C-section. And I did not want that. And if he was going to have to be born C-section, well, at least uh, they'd have to give me an epidural anyway. So at least I'd be halfway there, if anything. So this was my last chance of having a vaginal birth or so I felt and really, really, truly believed in my mind at this moment in time. So uh, the nurse went to go get the anesthesiologist so he can give me the epidural. And that was interesting. That was, it hurt a lot. The needle going through, they say it's pressure and it's very weird feeling to feel a needle in between two of your vertebrae. It was a very strange feeling. So prior to this, like I said, my contractions were coming every maybe two to three minutes. So I thought, you know, this would be great. Hopefully by the time he comes in here to administrate the epidural I will be during it'll be during a break and he, two or three minutes that's more than ample time for him to you know get the the needle initially in first and you know have to do whatever he has to do back there because I'd found out that during contractions standing still was the worst thing I could do I'd have to kind of move along with them I'd have to ride through the contractions so of course he comes in and I have one contraction right while he's setting up and getting everything ready back there so my like, great Two to three minutes, you know, two to three minutes of just downtime, and that is more than enough time for him to do his thing. So, of course, because this is just the way life works, I begin to have another contraction shortly after him getting the needle out. So, I'm like, great. So, they're trying to get me, both my husband and the nurse are trying to get me to stand still, to keep my head down, keep my shoulders relaxed, not to move. But, like I said, I, was, I like to wiggle through with the contraction, so I'm trying everything in my power to stand still so you know i don't end up being paralyzed from the waist down essentially so i'm just i'm just relaxing i'm trying to breathe through it so i'm like okay well i already made it through one contraction i can make it through this one and what would you know i'm having another one right after that one so i had three contractions back to back while this man is trying to put this needle in my back so he gets it initially done and you know he's like okay good great job so i'm like yes at least now you know the pain will start to go away well while he's doing whatever he's doing back there and i'm just relaxing you know trying to breathe through this third contraction all of a sudden i feel another pinch like he put another needle back there and i jumped because i was not expecting it the first time he's like oh well this is gonna feel like a bee sting so you know i mentally prepared myself hey don't you're gonna want to flinch when you feel it but don't flinch but since he didn't give me a warning the second time, I jumped. And I remember both the nurse and my husband, they're like, no, 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 don't move, don't move. But I was like, oh my God, why didn't you say something? Like if you had said something, I wouldn't have moved. So whatever, the epidural is in there. It's cool, it's fine. My nurse comes back to check on me about maybe 20 minutes after it's been in because she was gonna try to put that monitor inside to see how it was going. And while she's doing that, she's like, oh wow, you're at a nine. And you know, I had progressed so far and so much just from those like 20 minutes of me not fighting against my own body. So she's like, okay, well, we're just gonna give you a little bit of a rest now because like I said, I'd been at it since five in the morning, just, you know, awake. So I did, I, I did kind of have like a weird sleep. I did fall asleep for a little bit. But then when she woke me up again, I was 10, uh, 10 centimeters dilated and everything was looking good. So we were going to give baby half an hour to drop down a little bit more. And at this point in time, it's about 2 in the morning, I think. So, um, uh, no, half an hour, an hour. I think we gave him an hour. So at this point in time, it's like 1 or 2 in the morning. So we give him a little bit more time to come down and he does. We do, I think two sets of uh, practice pushes, and the nurse decides that it's time to call the doctor. So I'm super excited, I can't wait. 
My doctor comes in 20 minutes later and it is time to start pushing. So from the time I pushed the first time with my doctor to the time that he's actually, Vladimir was actually born, it was a total of 11 minutes. So it wasn't that very long, it was really quick. If I could relive anything of that day, it would be the actual act of pushing him out. That was the that was my favorite part of it. It might sound strange, but he was just so warm and so soft. It was that I loved it. And I think I don't know if a lot of people say that the pressure down there when baby is actually coming out is still so painful. I had no pain. I don't know if it was I was because I was running on a like a uh, high of just oh my god my baby's almost here or if it was because i had just gotten the epidural so it was still very strong i'm not sure but it did not hurt in the slightest so he was born at on november 3rd at 3 32 a.m and he's just perfect he was amazing i absolutely adored him i did however i did tear in two different places uh one of them being my vaginal wall, and I bled an awful lot. Uh, the nurse had ended up mentioning to me after I was stitched up that if I hadn't stopped bleeding, that they were pretty sure they were going to have to give me a blood transfusion. So I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm glad that I stopped bleeding. But I did have a few stitches. And overall, I mean, mean nurses aside and not listening to me, this birth it was amazing it was great it's his you know it's his birth story regardless of whether i liked it or i wanted it to go down like that or not it's his and this video is not meant to make anybody feel bad about themselves for either wanting a vaginal birth or c-section straight out of the gate you know birth is about you and empowering yourself it's supposed to be a magical moment between you your partner but most 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 importantly you and your baby honestly and whether that means having a vaginal birth at home or having one at the hospital or just even having a c-section at the hospital you know it's whatever makes you happy and that's pretty much it thank you guys so much for watching this it's taken me so long to load this. My baby is about a month old now. So, like I said, we do daily vlogs here. So, if you guys would like to check those out, be feel free. If not, then you guys are more than welcome to just keep on moseying by. So, I will link down below the actual um, vlog of his birth. We do have a few... Uh, clips of him being born so if you guys are excited to see that or would want to see that i'll link that down below and we will see you guys later bye